the fat bastards back. Chubby puppies, how are you doing? It's me, it's been a while. So, special day today. Um, I'm just leaving where I live in Lincolnshire and I'm driving down to London. I've got to go to, uh, to Harmston on the way uh, to Black Cats because I'm going to borrow their trailer. But why am I going to London? Well, I'm off to fetch uh, the first stage of my aeroplane uh, that I've bought and I've got to assemble. So what's happening with the paramotoring then? I can hear you all saying, well, it's been an issue, as I've said before. Uh, I haven't given up on the paramotoring. Oh my God, bloody cyclists, bloody cyclists. I haven't given up uh, on the paramotoring. Um, but what I've decided to do is sell the Nirvana Instinct because after many years, you probably realize it, it's not the paramotor for me. It's not the paramotor for a novice. Certainly not the fat paramotor for a fat dude. Um, I don't quite know who, who it's the paramotor for. So the Nirvana's being sold. I do have another paramotor. Uh, you remember Steve who came to see me in Spain. Well, when we were in Spain, he bought himself a paramotor slash trike. Uh, he left it here in the UK. He's just not getting back from Canada uh, as often as he'd like to do. So it's been a bit of a waste of an investment for him. So I bought it off him. And there's some issues with it, with the cracked frame and things, as I mentioned in the last video, but I'm gonna get that sorted. Uh, so that's a project for the summer, along with sorting out building this new aeroplane so the aeroplane i've bought is called a kfa safari and kfa stands for kit planes for africa and i decided to go with the bush plane kind of aeroplane and the reason behind that is one of the things from paramotoring that i like the most is the idea of off airfield aviation and I think talking to the community of paramotor pilots, uh, a lot of you out there, you know, you kind of fly paramotors, several of you as well fly other aircraft, but the common theme seems to be off airfield aviation. You all seem to like the micro lights and things like that, then you can land in the fields and go camping with and that kind of business. And, and I like that too. Uh, that's my motivation. I like the idea of being able to fly away from standard airfields and land off airfield, camp, fish, whatever you like to do. Uh, so that's the style of aircraft I've gone for. Um, it's a bush plane, uh, stall aircraft, some people call them, short takeoff and landing. Uh, the idea is they're able to take off and land a shorter distance, but they have the big tires and the, the heavy suspension that allows you to be able to to land a bit sharper and on rougher ground. So I've gone for that kind of aircraft. Those kind of aircraft you tend to find more in uh, in Africa, uh, as well as Australia and America. We don't have much of an off aviation, general aviation thing going on at the moment in the UK. And the reason behind that is most of the land here in the UK is is owned. We own all our own land. We don't have any, you know, kind of what they call free land, if you like. That, uh, that you're able to land at, like they do in, in America. You know, America's fantastic for off airfield aviation because you can fly out into the middle of the boonies, uh, land there, and you don't have to have permission. Here in the UK, sadly, everything's owned, so we have to have permission. You can't just land off airfield without having permission. So it's a bit more difficult. So because of that, the whole off airfield aviation thing it just isn't a thing and that's sad but I kind of 
reason that you know maybe we can we can get this style of aviation to grow there is a growing number of people who enjoy off airfield aviation and I think it might be nice if we could grow, grow kind of a group or a collection of network even of people who like off air, uh, who like off airfield aviation bloody hell can't speak who like off airfield aviation um, but also people who have areas of land that are suitable for landing and maybe there's some kind of arrangement we can do but I already know a few people with private airstrips and, and that's where we'll start so KFA Safari off airfield aviation uh, the first thing though I had to do um, was get my general aviation license back because uh, I do have a pilot's license for it's a PPL private pilot's license for aircraft PPLA uh, I obtained that well, God, late 80s early 1990s and uh, I flew quite a few hours and then over the years as career and family took over I just stopped flying and then if you've not flown so many hours within a year um, you can't just jump into an aeroplane and fly you've, you've got to go through proficiency checks and things like that and I never had the time to do that so once I actually let my ratings lapse uh, I, I never bothered anymore and that went on for years and years so I've had to go and sort that out so I've been taking some uh, flying lessons again to get what's called a licensing proficiency check um, down at Wickenby Airfield Oh, that sun's out again chubby puppies where do you think we are today? what is it? look at that we are at sunny Wickenby Aerodrome there we go sun's behind me now so um, uh, you remember the, uh, the other paramotors go in um, I've got the new one which is an old one that needs some repair work doing but in the meanwhile, look at that windsock. In the meanwhile, we've got some flying lessons to do because it's been uh, a few years since I've flown in light aircraft. Um, and I've got to do a quick licensing proficiency check. Um, but I'm gonna do a bit of, uh, bit of practice first. One of those little things, a bit tight for me. See you soon. here we are problem is when you're the fattest Cessna pilot in the UK you need to find yourself the smallest flying instructor in the UK and I think I found just the one here he is look how tiny he is now my pilot's license is an old brown UK PPLA uh, I was very lucky when they issued my license, they were they were licenses for life. I don't think that's the same anymore. I think your license can expire, and that can be more problematic. But with me, it's a license for life, so I just had to renew my ratings, um, and I had to do what's called a licensing proficiency check in LPC with with an examiner. So I had to do some lessons, and as I said, we can be airfield. Uh, Lincoln Flight which is uh, the local flying school uh, where I live near Wick uh, Wickenby Airfield in Lincolnshire the airfield is only a few miles away from where I live and they kind of put me through my paces so I went for a lesson uh, just to find out what I'd forgotten I was quite surprised by what I hadn't forgotten I think basically uh, I had the ability to fly still, but I was very rusty, a little bit 
off colour when it came to landings. I was flaring a bit high. That could have been dangerous if I hadn't gone through this process. Um, and they took me through the whole syllabus in about eight hours with the flying. And then I did the the LPC at the end, which I did last week uh, with a, an examiner and passed. So I have my pilot's license back. So armed with pilot's license now, um, I decided to, to buy this aircraft. I'm just going now to fetch it. So off to Black Cats to fetch the trailer. And then we'll be driving down to London to actually fetch the aeroplane, which is the easy part of the journey because then I've got to build the bloody thing. Uh, there's quite a few hours worth of, of building work in there and, and I've also got to empty the garage. The rest, last video, I've spent hours in that garage. It still looks... Uh, the same mess so we we're, we're probably gonna have to do something brutal when I get back with the aeroplane to, to get it in and get it out of the way unfortunately it's full um, of my children's junk that's a problem with kids they you know they move out they they go and find their own places to live but they're never big enough for all the junk so they just store all the junk with the parents and I've got garages full of children's junk that is junk that they don't believe that should be gotten rid of, but I know that in 10 years time, they'll just bin it all. So I'll store it for 10 years at my expense until they're ready to bin it. That's normally what happens. There's another reason behind the KFA Safari as well. The great thing about it is, uh, this is an aircraft uh, that's a little bit larger than the traditional bush plane, you know, things uh, like the Kit Fox, for example, uh, they're quite popular amongst that kind of uh, bush plane, um, off airfield aviation kind of style, but uh, it's smaller. The KFA Safari is larger. It's larger, it can carry heavier people. It means that the, the aircraft is big enough to be able to carry me, a reasonable sized passenger, a full tank of fuel, and some luggage in the back. And that's the reason I went for this aircraft. So it kind of works out perfect for the larger pilot. I did a lot of research into this. Um, it's about the only one that's out there that's suitable. If I want to do the off airfield aviation here in Lincolnshire and throughout the UK, um, and I want to be able to carry passengers and maybe even a bit of camping equipment, I can't think of another aircraft that's that's suitable for that uh, in the kit plane. Uh, you know, in the kit plane business. So. A new journey. I'm excited. New journey. Maybe some more videos, eh? Be lacking the videos. Got a bit older. A little bit older. Not quite as chiselled.
anyway, just wanted to say, look, I'm going to get back into the videos and people have been asking where I've gone. The truth of it is the whole paramotor journey has kind of come to a standstill with the paramotor that I had. Uh, I am still in with the paramotor, as you know. Uh, I have this, uh, this old paramotor, the crank frame, that I'm also going to be spending some time trying to get sorted and back in the air. So the paramotoring journey hasn't ended. Uh, it's it's going to be in there. It's going to be dispersed within some of these videos. I, I hope you decide to keep following along and keep watching the journey and seeing what's happening. There will be paramotoring involved. I will be keeping in touch with all the guys down here. I will be getting into a new scene with the off-field airfield aviation. I'm hoping to combine the two and I'm hoping to keep the Cape the same uh, network of friends. I'm really keen to get this aircraft built, get flying into Wingland. As you know, Wingland's an airfield where a lot of the paramotor guys fly. It's also a um, perfect airstrip for me to be able to fly this aeroplane in. So I can do a little bit of both, uh, I hope. but you know a bit more focus on the kfa safari during these videos be good to have you along it's been a bloody while so what i want you to do as well is let all your friends know the fat bastard's back give me a thumbs up because apparently that helps with this youtube al algorithm thing what else do you do oh you subscribe so follow along and subscribe let everybody know and hopefully i'll see you very very soon bye for now